These are claimed to be the lightest power meter pedals available at just 260 grams per set. Now, chronic data nerd and handsome friend Simon von Bromley will join me shortly to analyze Look's new power meter pedals. We'll take a look at some bargain focused road shoes and sniff Felix's new genius bike packing bag from Tailfin. But first, I want to talk about this banger of a bike. It focuses latest Izalco Max, the brand's aero-inspired all-rounder road bike. This is the 9.8 model, which gets you a Shimano Ultegra Di2 group set and 45mm deep DT Swiss carbon wheels. The German brand says that this is its fastest ever bike, featuring redesigned tube shapes inspired by aeroplane wings. The cylindrical down tube has been replaced by more angular tubing. A 500ml water bottle in the down tube bottle cage is almost completely concealed from the front and adds only 0.3 watts of drag, according to Focus. It all adds up to a claim saving of 6.6 .6 watts at 45 kilometers per hour compared to the previous generation of the race bike. Like every brand, Focus has made the fourth generation Izalco Max stiffer and lighter, but in an unusual move, the brand admits to making the bike less comfortable. That's direct from the brand too, which isn't a claim that we hear every day, so let's dive a little bit deeper on that. It says bottom bracket stiffness was 69 newtons per millimeter on the third generation bike versus 79 newtons per millimeter on the new bike, representing an increase of 15%. The head tube is 8% stiffer on the new bike with the result of these figures, meaning that the new frame is 48% less comfortable according to Focus's own tests. But the frame is just one part of a bike's overall comfort. In a bid to compensate for the stiffer frame, Focus says it has improved seated comfort through the seat post. Well, we've got this in for our annual bike of the year test, so we'll be putting it through its paces to find out. The bike as you see it weighs 7.9 kilos, which isn't super light, but it is in the right ballpark for an Ultegra Di2 equipped road bike these days. The Giant Propel Advanced Pro Zero Access, for example, which was our aero road bike of the year in 2023, weighed in at 7.97 kilos in a size medium large with SRAM's Wireless Force Access group set. The bike costs £6,600 or €6,799. Again, this is roughly in line with current price trends. That same Propel Advanced Pro Zero costs £6,399 or $8,000. If those prices make you wince, and believe me, I am with you, there are cheaper bikes like the Merida Sculptura 8000 at £4,800 or €5,520. What do you think of Focus's latest all-round road racer, though? Let me know in the comments below. Right, let's see what Simon's got for us. So what's our first product? Well, Look has released this new Ooh. generation of power meter pedals with options for both road and off-road bikes. And we've been covering this for site. We don't have a review just yet, but we do have all the juicy goss. Right. Take us through the tech details here. Well, so this is, like any other power meter pedal, a power meter inside a pedal oh. set. Now the claimed accuracy is plus or minus 1%, but kind of, I think most importantly, Look says that these new pedals are gonna be much easier to use than their old versions. So talk me through the installation process. Why were they so fiddly? So Look's previous pedals were produced in collaboration with SRM, the German power meter company. They had a kind of very fiddly installation process which required the use of an 8mm Allen key and a 15mm pedal spanner and Look's app kind of all at the same time in order to get the kind of, you know, done them up just to the right tightness. Now with these ones, Look says you'll just need a standard 15mm pedal spanner and you just need to put them on hard basically. So they, Look is promising they're just much more plug and play. All the gubbins then, I assume, in the axle? Yeah, that's right. All the kind of gubbins are inside the spindle and so they really kind of look just like any other pedal. And I think that's Look's big pitch for these, as well as the off-road ones, which are based on their X-Track pedals. Essentially, Look is saying that this is a kind of power meter pedal set with no compromises versus a normal pedal set. And I assume that these are fitting standard Look Keo uh, cleats 
and then the X-Track. Actually use uh, Shimano's SPD. They do, yeah. So the X-Track off-road pedals use Shimano SPD cleats, two bolt cleats, and these ones use uh, Look Kio cleats. And of course there's no Shimano SPD SL cleat option because, well, they're made by Look. The, the key headline for me is that Look is claiming that these are the lightest power meter pedals available. What's the claimed weight here? So the claimed weight for this is uh, 260 grams per set. The extract power are a little bit heavier at 400 grams per set. Now 400 grams per set is slightly more than say Favero's Asioma Pro MX pedals which just launched with around 192 grams each. But yeah, 260 grams per set is the lightest. Although, you know, with pedals you're only going to be saving sort of 20, 30 grams or so. It's not the kind of, which, you know, maybe for a weight weenie is a significant amount. So all sounds good, but what about prices? So in terms of prices, the uh, Look Kio Blade Power Road pedals cost £899, €899 Euros or $999. And the off-road extract power pedals are slightly more expensive at £999.99, £1,099 or €1,099. Euros. Yeah, like I said, that is the kind of towards a more premium end. It's around what kind of Garmin's rally system costs. For Vero's pedal systems, both their Asio Maduro road pedals and the Pro MX off-road pedals are a bit cheaper. But I suppose looks kind of pitch for these is, you know, not only are they you know, accurate, advanced pedaling metrics, all of, all of that sort of good power measurement stuff, but they're also saying that these are kind of like amongst the best pedal bodies available as well. Now, you know, whether that is the case remains to be seen, of course, but that's kind of part of the pitch. These bodies can also be switched over on the axles, so you could in theory get two bodies and then just one axle, save a little bit of money yeah. if you wanted both systems. Yeah, that's right. So like Garmin's rally system, the kind of the pedal spindle is where all the power meter magic takes place, if you like. And so in theory, it will be possible to swap the road pedal bodies over to a set of off-road pedal bodies if you want and vice versa. Now we don't have any details on how much those spare pedal bodies cost yet as you know obviously as soon as we find out we'll put it up on biteradar.com either in the news story for these or in the review whenever that gets published. But yeah in theory that is going to be a feature here. Now that is technically a feature on the Garmin pedals as I said but the process of doing that is actually quite fiddly and there's a couple of very small Phillips head screws that make it not a particularly like fun process to do. You know, I can do it, I'm not a professional mechanic, but it isn't something that I'd want to be doing all the time. So if it's a bit easier to do here, then that will be a really good feature. Well, I certainly can't wait to see how these stack up in your review, um, especially against those options from Garmin and Favero, because those Faveros are very popular, but also I really like the off-road model of these. Oh, and do you want us to do a group test on all of these kinds of pedals? 5,000 likes on this video, and we will. We'll probably do it anyway, to be honest, yeah. but 5,000 likes would be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, Liam, I know that you are a man after my own heart, and I know that you enjoy a nice pair of high-end white cycling shoes. Oh, I, oh, look at those. Only the brightest dancing slippers will do for me. Well, these say. are Van Rysel's new RCR shoes. They're kind of a pro level shoe. You might notice some similarities between these and Specialized S-Works Torch. These are kind of three millimeters wider in the forefoot. They've got a new dual dial system. 12 on Van Rysel's arbitrary stiffness index. 12 out of what? Not so sure. But the big news with these is a kind of full carbon sole, pro level design but a bargain price of £169.99. I think these look absolutely fantastic, and not just because they are fresh out of the box. Are you testing these? I will be testing these, yeah, that's right. But like, like you say, I, I, do, I genuinely do think they look really good. Now, obviously, Van Rysel has a big uh, reputation for bargain prices, and of course, just because something's cheap doesn't mean it's automatically good, but the soles do look, you know, very stiff. The shoe looks very well made adjustable cleat bolt holes, plenty of ventilation, a nice quality in a sole. They're reasonably light as well by the feel of things. We haven't got them on the scale yet, but we will soon. I mean, the, the, the key for me, I think, when it comes to shoes, the fit is really what makes a shoe good or bad. So whether this fits your foot is gonna be a big factor there, but yeah, they look great. Should we weigh them? Shall we? Ooh, Ooh, 309. That's not, that's, to be fair, that's not too bad for a 170 70 pound shoe. Yeah, 309. Most high end shoes are around 250 grams each, so 309 grams is not too bad, really. I think this is really cool from Tailfin. This is their down tube pack. 
They come in 1.7 and 3 litre sizes, and you can strap them pretty much anywhere on your bike. Felix got this 1.7 litre version as he wanted to increase his on-bike storage, but he didn't have extra bottle bosses. In his eyes, this bag was perfect. Felix used it for a three-day bikepacking trip through Mid Wales with Jack Luke, using it to keep extra tools and a spare tube. The main bag is made from Hyperlon and Ripstop Nylon, and there are little rubber feet made from a nice soft rubber so it doesn't damage your frame. So on Felix's Cannondale Synapse, there's not a lot of room between the bag and the front mudguard, but it does fit in there, and because the mount is so solid, Felix said that there's been zero amounts of rubbing. Now it is waterproof, it has a little fold over top. It's not recommended for forks, but it will go over existing frame bosses. Now, what's Felix yes, got in here? Yes, because this, this is loaded. I'm betting <laughs> it's just gin. Like a lot of gin. He has to deal with us videographers. Whoa, it's NFTs. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a, a tube. Sorry, Felix, I've ruined that's that for you. Tape. There is another tube. Better taped up that one, Felix, I have to say. So this is, this is going to wear a hole in the bag, isn't and, it, Felix? Right, so Felix, what's going to wear a hole in your inner tube? <laughs> a multi-tool. <laughs> but yes, that's it. Felix, I reckon you could fit more in there. Some Haribo would be my recommendation. How much do these cost, Liam? These cost, um, so the 1.7 is £60 or $75, and the 3 litre is £70 or $85 which is not horrific. Not too bad, not too bad, really. These have a three kilo carrying capacity as well. So, you know, you could fill it with- A um, nice bottle of wine. A, a, yeah, a nice bottle of wine. Well, what an excellent collection of products, but what do you make of Focus's approach? Making their bike even stiffer at the expense of comfort? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want more premium bike packing content, which I know that do, why not check out Felix's epic 2000 kilometer ultra endurance Lauf race bike. That's right here above Simon's face. Remember, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. What's the charge? What is the charge? Eating a meal? A meal? A succulent Chinese, Chinese meal? <laughs>